One of the new things that they've added in Premiere Pro CS Next is that you can actually apply presets which were designed and usually only applied in speed grade. Now they are found under the effects tab and under a new category called Lumetri Looks. And when you open up Lumetri Looks, you've got a whole series of them. And if I open up Cinematic, you'll see that we actually have an idea of what they look like. So Bleach Bypass 1, Bleach Bypass 2. If I click on Compression 1, there's Compression 1 and Compression 2. So you can actually see that you've got an idea of what they look like. And so to change the way that a particular shot looks like, so if I go down to Style and let's say we want to make this one look 70s, that's what a 70s 1 or 70s 2 will look like. I can take the clip and I can simply drag and drop it onto the actual clip and it can make it as simple to change as that. However, there is a lot more power than at first meets the eye. Obviously, I am applying a look. It's a dot look file, which is what you create inside Speedgrade and I'm applying it to this particular clip. But if I go to the effects controls panel up here, you'll notice that I've actually also got a little option here to go to setup and when you click setup, all you have is basically a browser and the browser allows you to go to the desktop perhaps and find a folder that you've created which has got your own series of looks that you may have created inside of Speedgrade. So you can create your own looks, save them to your own folder and apply them directly inside Premiere Pro. Now why would you want to do this? Why wouldn't you go through Speedgrade? One of the reasons you might not want to, and I'm just going to select this and hit delete so it's not on the item anymore, is that sometimes it can take an awful long time to export timelines from Premiere Pro to Speedgrade. Because when you select your whole timeline, you were to go to Edit, Send to Speedgrade, what would happen is it renders out the whole timeline to lossless files, DPX files. So each frame is rendered out as a lossless DPX file, which is where you actually do your work inside of Speedgrade. That can take a long time to render out. So sometimes, if you know that there's not an awful lot of colour change in a shot that you're working on, and you can see here that there's not an awful lot of, of colour change in this particular shot until we get to the next shot, but on this one it's very similar, what we could do is we could export just a few frames to Adobe Speedgrade and then create a look in that that I can then bring back into Premiere Pro and apply very quickly. The other alternative would simply be to go to Speedgrade. Now, this is Speedgrade CS Next. This is how it opens up. One of the big differences, by the way, is everything's done over here in tabs. We had a desktop before and uh, different bits and pieces, but it's much easier to click on the media and then click on the color and, and go that way. But when you go over here, if I was to actually navigate to that same folder, so I've got some examples inside here, and I actually open up the folder and I open up the test footage folder, it's going to show me what footage is inside that folder you'll notice that the two MPEGs don't show. This is a ProRes file, and I've actually got another one in here, and you've got a little drop down here that says Sequences from Selected Folders, and you've also got one that you can click plus subtree, which opens up another folder I happen to have inside there as well, which is this Adobe footage called The Alchemist. You see that this is an image sequence that's supported, ProRes is supported, and many high-definition footage types are supported, but my MPEGs are not supported. So I can't open these directly in Speedgrade anyway to create a grade, which I could then save to apply to my footage directly in Premiere Pro. It's one way of working. Obviously, you can create a grade and you can export the whole thing out of Speedgrade if you want. But sometimes it's great to create something that you can apply yourself through this new function that you've got in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go back to Premiere Pro and I'm just going to do a very quick selection of my footage. So if I do an I and an O for an in and an out point, I can actually make them a bit smaller. I don't really need an awful lot of, it, of information to, to, to do this because it's, the color's going to stay the same pretty much the whole way through. So I can create a look just using a very small selection. Notice, by the way, that you don't have a work area bar here. It's done with in and out points. You can, by the way, go back and create work areas if you go back here and create work area bar. But I'm going to work with just an in and an out point. And I now go to File send to Adobe Speedgrade and then I'm going to take it to that folder that I've got on my desktop Speedgrade folder and I'm just going to do it here so it's going to go both into Harbor it's going to create the IRCP file and it's going to export my DPX images into a folder in here so if I just click save you'll see that it is actually exporting them if you notice this is just a very small area and it's taking this much time on a reasonably powerful computer you can see it can be a very long and slow process 
So if I now go across to Adobe SpeedGrade, here's SpeedGrade, and I now go to here where it says open a project, click the open SpeedGrade project and navigate to that same folder, which is again on my desktop. And there's a SpeedGrade project and you'll see that I've got two things now. I've got the actual project, the IRCP project, which I'm going to open. And here is the folder with the DPX images in. If, to actually show you that they are DPX, let me actually go to my computer, go to my desktop, actually navigate to that same folder, float into Harbor, and open that up and you'll see that they're DPX images that have been exported. And you can see that's actually quite a lot of them just for that small piece of footage. So you can see why it took quite a long time to export. So what I need to do is select the project, double click, and that opens the project up inside SpeedGrade. And you'll see that I've got an audio track and I've got the video track. To actually look at it, I need to click on the color tab over here. There is the actual piece of footage. I can turn off the audio track because I don't really want that. You'd leave the audio track in there if you're going to export your final results from SpeedGrade. Obviously, I'm not exporting my final results from SpeedGrade. I'm just creating a look. Okay, so now that I've actually got this in here, I can select the layer, which is the video layer, go to the look tab, and now I can actually get to the various color wheels and all the bits and pieces that I can have for creating a look. The other thing that I'm going to want to have is obviously I'm going to want to have a graph up so that I can actually see what I'm working with. So let me go here where you see you've got this little handle to pull out and pull it out and you can see I've actually got a waveform that I might want and I can decide which scopes I want to look at. You've got one, two, three and four. Incidentally, when it first comes in, you might find them like this so that when you choose one scope, it's not the right scope you want. But as you just saw, I just rearranged them by dragging. So I went to four scopes. I took the one that I wanted to come up, which is the waveform monitor, and then I changed it to one scope. And there's the waveform monitor that I can actually work with. And then I can go in and I can make a grade. Now, I'm not going to spend a long time on the grade. I think I want to increase the contrast a little. And I really want to make the blues. I'll take the temperature down. I'm just going to take the temperature down and make it cooler. So we're just going to make it bluer, if you like. Now that's just a very simple grade. To see before and after, just push and hold the zero key on your number pad and you'll see before and after. It's only a subtle change. In fact, I'm going to make it a bit bigger so you can clearly see it when we go across to... There we go. It's excessive, but I'm just doing this so you can see that there is a grade that's been created. So before and after, before and after, that's just a disaster. I'd never use that, but, but it shows you where it is. Now what I want to do is I want to save this as a look file. Now that's down here at the bottom of the look tab. I'm just going to expand that. In fact, I can take it up to the, uh, the whole area. And I did mention the other looks that are presets. Here are those other looks that are presets already in Premiere Pro. But you've also got this custom folder. And you can go and find a folder that already exists on your desktop. Now, I've got my desktop here and go down and find my speed grade example. Notice, by the way, there's no area here to create a new folder. I needed my folder already created. That might have changed. This is a very early version of speed grade, but it might have changed. But here it is, so that that's the folder I'm going to be working in, so I can actually save my look in here. And if I click this little button down here, it's going to save it. So it's going to save my dot look file. And when I click save dot look, it's untitled, and I can actually name it. So I can call it... Um, I can call it overdone, overdone look, or overdone example, and click away, so that's actually saved. Now, I don't need to do anything else in SpeedGrade at this point, I'm just go back to Premiere Pro. Here's Premiere Pro. Now, at the moment, I'm in my effects controls, I deleted whatever look was on there, so you can see there's no look on there. Just apply any of the Lumetri looks, so I can just go to that one, it's applied, that'll do, drag on there, and it's applied. Then go back to this little button here. Click on that button and then navigate to that particular folder that you've got. And you'll see that there is an overdone example look file. Double click and there it is, applied inside Premiere Pro. All I've done is I have created a look inside of SpeedGrade, saved the look, and then opened up the look through this Lumetri looks option that is new to Premiere Pro CS Next by just replacing it here. However, please note that at this point in time, it doesn't change the name up here. That might change in future editions of Premiere Pro Speed Grade, but at the moment you apply a look, even if you've changed it, the name's not actually going to change. But I have applied the look and it's worked through. Now, why is this advantageous? Obviously, you can apply it to adjustment layers. So if I go to my video bin, I can create an adjustment layer. 
and take my adjustment layer and stick it across multiple items and I can apply that excessive look to multiple items so again I can take the same look I can copy this one control C copy that control V the same look actually doubly over the top so I need to turn it off on this one now so there's that look on both items give me an excessive look on both of them but they are both following a theme now so you can take a look and you can apply it across multiple files but also you can save yourself a lot of time if you've got loads and loads of items on your timeline and you don't want to export them but you do want to create a look you can export the bits that matter and create a look for that so you could for example export transitions and bits and pieces anyway what I can see coming from this is that lots of people are going to start creating Lumetri looks so that you can buy them as presets but you know how to create your own you can simply go to SpeedGrade create your own look and then export it as a look file into your own custom folder that can then be applied inside Premiere Pro I hope you found this tutorial useful my name's Andrew Davis and I hope you're looking forward to the next release of Premiere Pro and SpeedGrade thanks for watching